Stars are amazing. They are magnificent any way you look at them, which I do not recommend, as it might blind you. They can be as large as the orbit of Saturn, or as large as Saturn itself. They can range in temperatures from only 2,000 Kelvin to over 200,000 Kelvin. But what are stars anyway? Contrary to popular belief, stars are not large balls of fire. So, something else must be powering these giant furnaces. If we look deep inside the core of a star, we'd find the very process that keeps these stars running. Nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion is a process where atoms are being smashed into each other with so much power that they basically turn into new elements. This process produces a lot of heat and energy, which pushes against the force of gravity. This creates a balance between the force of gravity trying to crush the star into a black hole and the energy of nuclear fusion trying to blow the star into smithereens. Now that we've learned the basics of a star, let's get to the main part of the video. Stars go through a life cycle, in which the star will undergo a lot of change as it evolves through the stages of its life. Unlike the life of the life forms we find on Earth, the life cycle of stars can last up to millions, billions, or even trillions of years. The cycle begins with birth. Stars are being formed in a large cloud of gas, also known as a molecular cloud. If you look deep inside the molecular cloud, we will find a process known as fragmentation. This is a process where a part of the cloud fragments from the rest of the cloud and becomes its own thing. The fragmented piece of gas will slowly compress and collapse under its own gravity. This results in the formation of what's known as a protostar. Let's focus on this specific protostar for today's video. As more and more matter falls into the young protostar, it begins to grow. Once it reaches a certain mass, our young protostar will begin nuclear fusion in its core. This part of a star's life is called the main sequence. Some of our young star's friends didn't make it into the main sequence. They are what's known as brown dwarfs. Brown dwarfs are also known as failed stars because they don't have enough mass to start nuclear fusion in their cores. Let's focus back to our star. It has now entered the main sequence stage of its life. There's a problem when stars enter the main sequence though. Nuclear fusion releases so much energy that the star starts to make what's known as stellar winds. These stellar winds blow away any more mass trying to feed the star and make it grow. So at a certain point, it would just stop growing any larger. The main sequence is the longest part of a star's life, covering about 90% of their entire lifespan. In this stage of their life, stars burn hydrogen into helium. Fast forwarding billions of years into the future, the star is now slowly running out of fuel. It has already fused most of its hydrogen into helium. So, as an act of desperation, the star starts to burn the helium. But there's a slight problem with burning helium. It requires more heat and more pressure to do the helium fusion compared to doing hydrogen fusion. So, gravity took over for a while and the star contracts into a smaller size than it was before. But the contraction causes the helium atoms to be able to fuse all of a sudden. This sudden helium fusion causes the star to balloon in size to hundreds of times its original size. It is now in its red giant phase. Because the star is so much larger, the heat on its surface is distributed over a much larger area, causing the temperature of the star to cool down and making the star shine with a redder hue, hence the name red giant. One day, our sun will enter this phase and burn the inner planets to a crisp. The death of a star depends on its mass. Higher mass stars burn heavier and heavier elements in their core. The process goes like this. Helium turns into carbon. Carbon fuses into nitrogen. Nitrogen fuses into oxygen. Oxygen burns to neon. Neon burns into silicon. And silicon fuses to iron. Iron is nuclear ash. Fusing it into heavier elements requires more energy than it produces. So, the star implodes in on itself at a quarter of the speed of light and produces a huge boom we know as a supernova. These supernovas will push the sparse gas from the interstellar medium into a wall of dense gas. This wall of dense gas will then expand for tens of thousands of years and eventually disperse its substance back into the galaxy. Low mass stars like our sun don't go supernova when they run out of time. Instead, they die by releasing half their mass in strong stellar winds. This results in the formation of what's known as a planetary nebula. What remains of the star is a white dwarf, the core of the former star, about the size of Earth but as massive as the Sun. They are made of the leftover nuclei from the former star in a plasma state. White dwarfs are pretty interesting, so they'll be a topic for another video. But now, here is the last stage of a star's life, the rotting of its corpse. 
White dwarfs glow not through nuclear fusion, but through radiating what little heat they have left. Radiating this heat takes a really long time, as there really isn't a medium in a vacuum for the heat to spread. But after quadrillions of years, they will run out of heat eventually, and turn into a black dwarf. Black dwarves do not radiate any heat of their own, and are as cold as the space around them, which by now would have cooled down to near absolute zero due to the expansion of the universe. So, there you have it, the life cycle of stars. Stars are amazing any way you look at them. Their range of sizes, their brilliant colors, and their life from birth to death always amazes me. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll see you next time! And remember, you're a star.